Hello friends, James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com. Before we get into today's eye-opener report, I think it's time you and I had a chat. And as regular vi viewers of this weekly video series know, back last December, I proposed to Sibel Edmonds the idea of doing this report completely 100% for free, receiving zero dollars and zero cents, donating my time, one and a half to two workdays per week, to BoilingFrogsPost.com in order to make this eye-opener report completely 100% free and open to the public from day one. And for the last three months, you have been enjoying this report completely 100% freely, openly available here on YouTube. And I made that proposal in the giddiness of my recent appearance at the time uh, in Lille, France at the Open Source Software Conference, FOSA 2013, where I did my speech on open source journalism, giddy with the possibilities of the open source revolution and what it can really accomplish. And I did make that proposal in the good faith that the viewers out there would support this effort and would help to make this open open source revolution possible. And it seems unfortunately that that good faith may have been misplaced because in the three months that this report has been made available to the public for free, unfortunately BoilingFrogsPost.com has suffered a net loss of about 150 subscribers, i.e. people who were subscribed to BoilingFrogsPost.com who decided to cancel that subscription because hey, the eye opener is free and thus, hey, why bother paying? Uh, of course, that is completely the wrong mindset, and that is the mindset of the old paradigm, the old media paradigm where you pay to get fed the corporate garbage and nonsense by the New York Timeses and the Guardians and the other mainstream newspapers and news publications of the world. This is the internet revolution, this is the open source revolution, and it really, truly can't change the world, but it really and truly does rely on your support. So, right now, BoilingFrogsPost.com is involved in its quarterly fundraising drive, and they they are seeking to raise $12,000 uh, this quarter to help fund their operations and all of the people who produce uh, podcasts and articles and uh, reporting on a daily basis for BoilingFrogsPost.com. So once again, we are putting it in, the ball is in your court, really. Uh, if we can reach that goal, then the status quo will be maintained, and these eye-opener reports and the Boiling Frogs Post Roundtable videos will continue, as usual, 100% freely, openly available here on YouTube. If we do not reach that, uh, that figure, then something will change, and the eye-opener report will uh, we'll, we'll have to change. There, There's no way around it. And I've already put my money where my mouth is. I am literally donating my time 100% for free to this, despite the fact that I also have a family to feed and a roof to put over our heads. So this is not an insignificant decision that I've made. And I truly hope that you guys can come through and help to make this possible. Once again, details are up there on BoilingFrogsPost.com. Please, if you are not subscribed, please do so, and please make this work possible. And for those who are subscribed, I can't salute you and thank you enough for what you're doing for this open source revolution, because it really does depend on all of us. And while I'm at it, I should say that, yes, I don't get paid a single penny for the reports that I'm doing for BoilingFrogsPost.com, so if you do appreciate the work that I do here and elsewhere on CorbettReport.com, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the Corbett Report as well for as little as one dollar a month, which I think is a pretty reasonable amount. At any rate, uh, once again, the ball is in your court, and I truly hope that you guys appreciate this, uh, this work, and that if you do so, you will show that support uh, by subscribing. And on that note, let's get into today's report, and I'll be back next week to update you as to the quarterly funding drive. In recent weeks, the eye-opener has been examining the politics of division. In our first report, we looked at how the left-right political spectrum is used as a wedge to divide the people against themselves. In our second report, we showed how this has been accomplished in recent years to defuse the anti-war movement. And in last week's report, we examined how the corporate welfare state is maintained by way of these phony divisions. As important as the political spectrum is in keeping the people warring with each other, it is of course by no means the only wedge issue that is used to keep the public at each other's throats. Other tools of division include race. Let the word, I'm going to say the word during this too, nigger, honky, cracker. These words can cause a visceral reaction when people hear them. You may have even flinched. Looks like he's native Texas and being from Texas I would have to support that. But uh, I don't like him on the fact that he's black. 
And, if, and of course, there on, um, on uh, Governor Romney's knee is mm -hmm. his adopted grandson, mm -hmm. who is an African-American, adopted African-American child, Kieran Romney. Any captions for this one? One of these things is <laughs> not. <laughs> one of these things. This guy looks like he's up to no good. He looks black. In actuality, there was a major insertion that they edited out, which was the question to ask what his nationality and race was. Religion. Many of the Rakhine Buddhists, the majority, are determined to drive out the Rohingyas, saying they don't belong. In southern Egypt, authorities reported at least nine Christians killed since the coup. Dozens more were driven from their homes. To Bangladesh now, where recent attacks by Muslim mobs and Buddhist community continue to spark protests outside the country. Class. Well, as long as we've got three wars going, America needs to add one more. A class war. Democrats think highlighting the gap between rich and poor and saying government must step in and stop the rich from getting away with stuff wins them votes. <laughs> I think it probably does. And they're poor for a reason. Um, substance abuse is a reason. Uh, lack of intelligence, uh, laziness, poor planning, having three babies before you're 20 with no father and all of that. So there, there's always a reason why people are poor in America. He looks like a sweaty toothed madman. He looks like a homeless lunatic who might shoot you and a whole host of issues that do not intersect with the political sphere at all, but nonetheless effectively help to group people into warring camps. But the first question is, who is the quarterback of the Broncos? Peyton Manning. Very good. Second question. How many do I got to do? You got to do three. You get three. You get whatever drink you want. I got it. Including shots. All right. All right. Second question. Who is the head coach of the Seahawks? Pete Carroll. Very good. Third question. This one's the difficult one, but it's for the shop. What is the TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership? It's a boat. <laughs> the end result of this constant appeal to tribalism is to pit neighbor against neighbor, family against family, coworker against coworker, and even friend against friend, so that our lives consist of ever-dwindling spheres of people with whom we can agree totally on every issue. Meanwhile, the people in positions of very real control over the lives of those masses go unscrutinized, their actions lost under the 24-7 babble of nonsense being generated by the politics of division. So who got the money? To financial institutions in, in Europe and other countries. Which ones? I don't know. Half a trillion dollars and you don't know who got the money? There is, after all, a reason that the pyramid has historically been seen as a metaphor for social control. At the bottom lie millions of stones, atomized, divided against each other, but all acting in unison to support the layer above it. The further up the pyramid one goes, the fewer the divisions between the components of that layer until, finally, the capstone reveals itself as the single, unitary ruler of the entire system. This is the image of the oligarchy, rule by the few over the masses, through the age-old technique of divide and conquer. If divide and conquer is the technique that keeps the people oppressed, however, it is obvious that the one thing that the ruling class fears above all else is that the public will unite against them. If the people were ever to put aside their doctrinal differences and coordinate their efforts, the results would be staggering. This is not mere theory, but a political fact borne out by centuries of examples, and one that is continuing to have dramatic effect on the world around us. A classic example in recent years was the push to force milk from cows treated with bovine growth hormone into the marketplace. After concerns about the effects of this milk on both human health and the health of the cows themselves were made known through grassroots advocacy, however, consumer pressure led to BGH milk being taken off the shelves in store after store, including Walmart, Kroger, Safeway, Starbucks, Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream, and other places. Similarly with bisphenol A, an estrogen-mimicking endocrine disruptor used in the creation of certain plastics and resins that was found to have potentially hazardous effects on the development of babies and young children. A mass awareness campaign led to worried parents demanding BPA-free plastics, which in turn led to BPA being removed from product after product. In recent months, pressure on corporations has led to the removal of a number of food additives, chemicals, preservatives, and GMO ingredients from their products due to pressure from grassroots campaigns. 
We'll start with the first one. Kraft Cheese Singles to Lose Artificial Preservatives. Kraft is removing artificial preservatives from its most popular individually wrapped cheese slices, wrapped in plastic, of course. In the latest sign that companies are tweaking their recipe as food labels can come under greater scrutiny. The change affects the company's Kraft Singles in the full-fat American and white American varieties, yeah. which Kraft says accounts for the majority of the brand's sales. Sorbic acid is being replaced by natamycin, which Kraft says is a natural mold inhibitor. But that's not all. Chick-fil-A to serve chicken without antibiotics. The largest chicken chain in America shocked the fast food world late Tuesday, February 11th, when it announced that the company plans to only sell chicken raised without antibiotics at all of its stores within five years. The move is yet another signal that corporate America is increasingly aware of consumers' concerns about the ingredients in and the safety of the foods they eat. The corporate trend towards cleaner food seems to be catching fire. Those are the words of USA Today. And for the hat trick, James, Subway to remove chemical also found in yoga mats from their bread. Similarly with the fight against water fluoridation. In most cases, the fluoridation program is not the addition of medical-grade sodium fluoride to the drinking supply, but hexafluorosilicic acid, a toxic byproduct of the phosphate fertilizer industry. As scientific studies continue to mount demonstrating the harmful effects of fluoridation on people's bones, liver, thyroid, IQ, and, ironically enough, teeth, a concerned public has increasingly begun banding together across party lines to get the toxins removed from the water supply. One such case is in Austin, Texas, where young activists recently engaged in a hunger strike outside Austin City Hall to raise awareness of the problem, and have parlayed that action into a new PAC hoping to get the issue of fluoridation on the ballot in Austin. So during the hunger strike, we met a, a group of tremendous local activists that we had no idea of their existence beforehand, and they brought to us the knowledge of, uh, in Texas, we have a home rule initiative, as long as your city amendment allows for it, which in Austin we do, and that's the main reason we're going back to geographical representation with uh, November 2014 city council elections for the first time in 100 years. And so we're using that same policy, that same uh, a ballot initiative to bring it to a vote, which requires 20,000 signatures to get it on the ballot this November. We'll be following the same footsteps as they did for the 10-1 plan. And all we can do is hope for the best. Uh, we hooked up with Unacceptable Levels director Ed Brown to speak at their viewing here just a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's a documentary he's currently traveling the nation with, and we're looking to bring it back here for public awareness and do outdoor park viewings in the spring and summer, which is something traditionally Austin has here. The idea of grassroots campaigns helping to remove fluoride from the water supply is not unique to Austin. In recent years, citizen-led groups have successfully campaigned for the removal of fluoride from the water supply of cities around the globe, from Calgary, Alberta, to Windsor, Ontario, to Hamilton, New Zealand, to the entire country of Israel, and Portland, Oregon recently voted to keep fluoride out of their water supply. By no means are these campaigns limited to the health sphere. The Move Your Money project has encouraged people in the US and the UK to stop banking with the big, unaccountable megabanks and switch to local banks and credit unions, while Ithaca Hours, Colorado Mountain Hours, Calgary Dollars, and any number of similar systems around the globe encourage people to eschew central bank funny money in favor of local business supporting complementary money systems. In the tech field, the open source revolution is reimagining the way people collaborate, share knowledge, and produce innovations. From 3D printing and the sharing of the digital blueprints for the design of all manner of household objects under Creative Commons licenses, to the creation of downloadable roadworthy car chassis, to the sharing of designs and ideas for farming technologies in the open agriculture revolution, people are finding all sorts of new ways to come together regardless of political or philosophical or racial or class distinction to create vibrant, alternative communities of like-minded people interested in finding solutions to humanity's problems. Progress in these fields, of course, is by no means straightforward, and victory, as always, is hard won. But it can and does happen these victories will never be trumpeted in the media, which always and forever wants to continue to keep people divided and to play up petty differences to stop them from coming together on their shared concerns. Ultimately, the choice of whether we are interested in collaborating over solutions or bickering over differences is not up to the would-be rulers of society or their talking head mockingbirds or their political puppets. 
It is a conscious decision that we make to transcend the barriers of divide-and-conquer politics, to put aside petty differences and doctrinal disagreements for cooperation on positive solutions. That decision starts with you. And it starts today. This video is brought to you by the subscribers of BoilingFrogsPost.com. For more information on this and other topics, please go to BoilingFrogsPost.com. For more information and commentary from James Corbett, please go to CorbettReport.com.